Thank you very much, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Lessons from the Bible this morning. And we want you to know, as always, that we appreciate it and hope that the things that we have to say will be an encouragement and edifying to each and every one. If you have any questions concerning anything that we might say, we want you to feel free to let us know. And you can do that by giving us a call at 216-5856. Let me invite you to the services of the Lucas Street Church of Christ. Their worship service begins at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And they are situated where you can either go inside the building if you would like. Or if you want to, you can sit out in your car and listen to it on the radio at 101.9 and listen to the sermon there. And afterwards, they will come out and serve you the Lord's Supper and give you an opportunity to give if you're not comfortable going inside the building. We would love to have you to come and to be with us at the Swancott Church of Christ. Our worship service begins at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, and we also meet on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And we would love to have you to come and to be with us and to study God's with us there at the Swancott Church of Christ. This morning I want us to study from the book of John chapter 9. And there are some great things found in this particular chapter that I want us to think about today. And many of these things that we find here in John chapter 9... It's just kind of typical of people today. In John chapter 9, beginning reading with verse number 1, I want you to notice, it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Now notice that his disciples, those that walked with Jesus, those that were around him for quite a while, asked Jesus this question. And when you think about it, you might say, well, it's a stupid question. But yet, how often do we ask the same question today? They wanted to know, who was it that sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And it's so typical of us as human beings to believe that just because something bad might happen to someone, that it has to be somebody's fault because it happened. And their conclusion was here with this blind man that either it was because of something that he had done. And let me say this. How can a blind person born do something that's wrong? He was born that way. So, what is it that this baby that was born blind, what is it that he could have done? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Or what is it that his parents had done that would cause him to be born blind? My point is this. Things happen to people. Things happen to people, my friend, in life. Not that it is anybody's fault. Things, sometimes things just simply happen. And in this case, Jesus goes on to tell them that neither has this man sinned, so it wasn't because of something that he had done, and neither his parents. So here we have the answer. It wasn't because of something that he had done, and it wasn't because of something 
that his parents had done. And Jesus goes on to say, But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. In other words, because of what has happened to this man, because of him being blind, God is going to manifest his work. In other words, through me, through Jesus, in this situation. Now, how often do we think or that we ask silly questions just like this, like his disciples did? Things just happen to people, my friends. Things happen. It's just part of life. It's just simply part of living. Now, Jesus goes on to say, He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night coming when no man can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay, now let's get to verse 6. And this is very, very interesting. It says, When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spitter, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. How often do we read and we see how compassionate Jesus Christ is when it comes to those who are suffering and those who are in need? Do we show the same kind of compassion for people that we know that are hurting and that are in need? If not, here is a good example. Here is something that we ought to look at and think about. Jesus showing compassion to this man. And notice how he does it. He spits on the ground and he makes clay of the spitter and he puts it on the man's eyes. So I might say, well, you know, that's, that's, that sure is nasty. Well, it might be. But that's what Jesus did. He put it on the man's eyes. And then in the next verse, he says, Jesus says to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Now, let me ask you this question when we think about what I've just read. Was there anything difficult or hard for this man to understand what Jesus told him to do? I don't think so. It was very plain and very simple, wasn't it? He just simply said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. And this man, he went and washed, and he came sin, and his sight came to him. Here's the thing. When it's God or the Lord Jesus Christ or the Spirit of the Lord, whichever one it might be, they always, always make themselves very clear about what they want someone to do. Our problem is, sometimes we don't want to do what the Lord tells us to do. And that's on our part, and not His. God always makes Himself clear when He instructs someone to do something. For an example, what about in the Garden of Eden? It wasn't anything difficult about what he said to Adam and Eve. What about uh, when he told the Israelite to walk around Jericho so many times? It wasn't anything difficult to understand about that. What about Namath when he instructed him to go dip in Jordan? God always makes himself clear about what he wants someone to do. And so what we need to learn is to just simply have faith in what he says and do it. And today many people don't have faith enough 
in doing what they know that the Bible teaches us that we ought to do. There are so many who want to do something other than what the Bible has instructed us. And my friend, we'll never make heaven our home if we have that kind of attitude. Well, why can't I do this? Why can't I do it this way? Or why can't I do it that way? That's beside the point. The point is that we need to do what the Lord tells us to do. And when we do, then we're going to get the results that is for us. And like this man here in John chapter 9. When he went and washed, then he came seeing. That's when he gained his sight. When he went and did what the Lord told him to do. And so, I might ask, do you think that this man received his sight before he did what the Lord told him to do? Absolutely not. He received his sight when he went and washed in the pool of Siloam like Jesus instructed him to do. He didn't receive his sight on the way. He only received his sight when he washed and did like Jesus told him to do. He did not have this kind of attitude that says, you know, well, Lord, I believe if I go that uh, I receive my sight. But, Lord, I'm not going to go. You're going to have to give me my sight right here. No, he didn't have that kind of attitude. He simply went and did what the Lord told him to do. When he went and break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. 